So we're adding some music to this. We're going to get you up. We're going to get you going. Um, because we've had a long two days. Now, since this is a wrap-up, it's not just about imparting some information. It's about thanking very much. Oh, I should speak into the darn mic, right? Okay, it's thanking very much Jen and uh, Miriam for putting on a conference with persistence that had a lot of challenges, and they did a great job. So thank you. Fantastic job. I'll come to any, any conference you put on. The other thing I like to congratulate is the startups that I met. I think I speak for Mike and I. Is there some really great ideas there? And I think you should congratulate yourself for putting that together. Thank you. All right. Now, be between my talk and cocktails, it's hard. So I'm, I'm probably going to have to move a little quicker here so that, uh, whatever, okay. Maybe we're not having cocktails, right, okay. So, um, oh, I'm upset. <laughs> oh, the, a catering, see what I mean? Look what they put up with, okay. Now before I start this talk, it's going to be about a broader set of equations we've talked about so far. We've focused on angels. And uh, I'm going to bring in some more options, in fact, uh, uh, quite a few options for you. I was sitting in front of some of the investors, me an angel, of course I'm greedy, I want to have all the deals, but I actually had to tell, and please, whoever you were, stand up, two or three of them, that they should be doing crowdfunding. Stand up. Now you see? So even now, opportunities exist that didn't exist for them, yesterday. So we're in a very dynamic marketplace with a lot of new things happening. Now, crowdfunding, I was supposed to have my partner in crime, Oscar here, and Oscar knows a heck of a lot about crowdfunding. In fact, he's more up to date on the regulations, disclosure rules, Privacy Act than I am. I can't fill in for him. Now, I did ask him to give me some information before I went on stage, but I, I do miss him because he's got a lot of vital information that I think uh, would be good for you to know, and I think he will hopefully have a chance to uh, communicate some of that later on. But Mike and Oscar work co-teamed yeah, yeah. in conferences, and Mike has a lot of that information and a lot of experience. Not only that, but Mike has been in the angel mode and is now seeing the evolving crowdfunding such as Seeds Up in Calgary and how that may impact us as well. So, I just want to tell you a little bit about what we are. Um, we're a virtual angel group, kind of like the Cure Do Forum, but we're all LinkedIn based and all off the RV Capital site. We're about 8,900 angels, and we're also shifting in the crowdfunding with a couple of new sites. Watch out for Launchopolis, and well, there's a lot of great sites out there. And uh, there are billions in, in venture capital, and we can normally find angels who may have an appetite for your location or your fit, if it's not me. Because I have a box I invest in, they all have boxes. Um, what's happening now is we move from a world where the funding approach was pretty simple. It's like you can have any phone you want, but it's only black. Today, the funding options have exploded. And a lot of the companies I speak to have this in mind, I got to do this. But it's not the best funding approach. They have a much better one to launch their business and make success. Am I talking too fast? Before I start, is there anyone here who has done a crowdfunding campaign? Get up there. Because this is vital. I, I've done a few, but you can sit next. I think we may have a mic over there. That's yours. I told you it's going to be different. Okay, and what we're trying to create is interaction. So I don't want you out there just sitting on your chairs listening to me. I want to hear some interaction. I'm not going to wait for 
answers and questions. If you've got something to say that can add value, you say it now. You say it as I go, okay? Now, one of the things that I find out when I work with ventures is they have a great idea, but they tend to fall off the cliff because they forgot one point. And I remember I was saying to a fellow today that what we use is a pre-flight checklist because if there's one thing you miss that could hurt your company, you want to make sure that you get it before you're running. And the fellow I spoke to said, you know what, I agree with that. I was impressed. Not that everybody disagrees with what I say. But he said, I agree with that. I said, well, why? He said, I'm a pilot and I know when I'm taking my plane up, I better get that checklist and go over it every time because there might be one thing. And I tell you, when you're 10,000 feet up there, you don't want that one thing. And then I chatted with Les who does car racing. And I said, do you do a checklist before you get in your car and race? He says, you're darn tootin'. So what is it that these guys see that we need to see? I'll talk a bit about that today. And then one of the most important things is when you're taking advice, ask anyone you're taking advice with what he sold his last company and the one before, and is he a home run hitter? Because anybody know baseball here? When I bring on a hitter, tell me which one I'll choose. George comes and says, you know, Don, I've only got 100 RBI. I've missed all the passes. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm blocking my okay, here. It's okay, it's okay. But I, I've missed them so much, I'm sure I'll be better tomorrow. Or Mike, who comes up and says, I got a 400 RBI. I'm pretty good at hitting that ball. Which one do you think I'm going to pick if I'm running a baseball team? Yeah, why? You know what the, somebody said to, today? He said, Don, there's thousands of ways that people in a venture can fail. I said, yeah, you're right. And there's probably only five or six intelligent ways that they can succeed. So having failure experience is somewhat useful, but in the scheme of things, you'd have to go through another 10,000 failures to be able to really narrow it down. You want the person, gal, who's actually done it before and been successful, because they know some of the things that you want to know, and that's your mentor. You want to add something to that, Mike? No, carry on. Okay, so what so I'm far, doing so a lot... Good. Yeah? Good, good so far. Okay, good so he, He's going to stop me if I'm off, off base. <laughs> I do a lot of speaking world, worldwide, and what I speak on, if this works, oh, is that what it is? This probably works, uh, is I start... Talk about the huge funding choices that exist now. We're democratizing the funding world. You're no longer a slave to the money people. It's changing. I remember talking to some banks. I was in Edmonton trying to raise 10 million. They said, we're the only games in town. If you don't bring us on board, pay us a board fee, we're not going to invest and you'll go nowhere. Well, two months later, we had 10.5 million U.S. in our bank invested. So they don't run the world anymore. Don't let them run you. Stand up and be counted. There are other ways to get the money and better ways. For example, when people start, they tend to use their personal assets or their dad, especially if he's a doctor and you're trying to launch a medical application. Your dad will help fund it. He's a doctor, right? But there are hundreds of other doctors that if he's in it and knows it, might fund it too. So you don't need to go to the bank, go to the doctor. The old mo models are moving upstream. So what does that mean? They tend to want to see companies later in the development of the company, not earlier on. And that includes a lot of venture companies that are moving upstream it's hard to find a venture company, for example, in Can Canada, but even in the U.S. that will fund pre-revenue startups. Mm. True. True. Okay. So something else has to happen, right? Strategic investors are, this room is full of some very good strategic investors, the incubators, the startups, 
in Mexico, in Ottawa. The Kiritsu, there's lots of strategic investors, and these people can also be um, a big company in your area, you know, uh, a, a mass or one of your clients might say, "Hey, this is a this is a great opportunity." So one one of the opportunities that came up today in the venture player was, I want to sell an application to book bus tickets. And I said, "Oh, fascinating!" And there's a hundred and ten bus CEOs out out there. How am I going to raise money? Get them in a room and, and off, offer to sell them shares. Because what you're going to do is take their current market share up from 50% to 70. He said, probably a good idea. So how long is that going to take? You already know them. You've got the application that they love. Sometimes the funding is right in front of your face. I had a medical company who was producing a wipeable, cleanable keyboard to sell to dentists. And dentists loved it. So we round up 25 dentists, they made their presentation, and they had 650, 700,000 in pledges by the end of the half hour session. And they closed out at 750,000 within a month. Are they waiting for Godot? Are they waiting for a venture firm? Waiting for Godot is a good play. It means you wait forever where you could have taken a much shorter route. Now, I'm going to talk about crowdfunding, which is one down on the list. And I'm going to ask you to all go to a site called, on LinkedIn called Crowdfunding. It is one of the most dynamic sites and it has a lot of discussion on who's what in crowdfunding, what's the latest stats. And it's my little secret of how I keep up to date, because I get all this input from crowdfunding beat and I get all this data. And I'm kind of in the center of that. Why? Because I own that group. I also own a group called Canada Angels, which is the largest group of angels registered on LinkedIn. 2,000 of them. Maybe not the largest. Yeah, now can I chime in for a second? Yeah. So, Don, the problem with angel investors is that there aren't enough of them. Um, most countries limit the angel population because of securities regulations. They only let rich people gamble their money. I think everyone should be allowed to gamble and <coughs> lose their money, just like angels do. Hmm. Now, the problem is that regulators in countries like US and Canada protect the general public by having the investment barriers quite high. And you have to meet certain qualifications to invest. Now, I've really got some good news for you guys in this audience. You don't have that problem in yeah. Latin America. You do and you don't. There are 40 equity Great crowdfunding sites Great. in Latin America, over 40. Cup sites like Bruda, uh, IdeaMe. Hey guys. And the regulations here aren't as bad or as hard as they are in Canada and the United States. Uh, a, a company, um, a cerveza manufacturer in Chile, just raised $150,000 from a whole bunch of investors ranging from $60 to a couple thousand. The average was $2,600 per investor. And they did that through a local crowdfunding site. That's illegal in the United States. Silicon Valley, where all the angels are supposed to be. But, you know, the power of the crowd is that all of you, everybody in this room, can afford $100 or $1,000 on a great idea, right? So that's what gets me excited about crowdfunding. It's no longer limited to the rich people. Anybody can participate. And I think it's our right as citizens of whatever country to be able to gamble, waste our money, invest it, do whatever we want with our money. Why should a government tell us? The interesting thing, Don, is that what Crowdfunding, or what regulators miss about crowdfunding, is that it's self-policing. We had a yeah. situation in Canada where, and I think you wanted me to bring this out. Absolutely. I'll, then I'll sit down for a no, minute. No, no, it's good. So, it's good. It so, so the regulators are worried that someone is going to scam you and, and trick you and take your money and run to Venezuela with it, right? <laughs> um, so, but never Chile, right? Right. Never, never Chile. So, and, and, and this used to be the way 
that the securities industry worked 20 years ago, right? Because information was not accessible by the general public. And so the regulators had to protect you. Now what happened is there's an example of a guy who was banned from securities regulation because he was a fraud artist and he fleeced people and basically stole a couple of million dollars from a bunch of investors by lying to them, right? So they banned him from securities trader. Now you said you're doing Kickstarter and you did a Kickstarter campaign. Or was it Kickstarter that you did? Okay, so Kickstarter, this same guy who was banned from selling shares or equity went on Kickstarter with another of his crazy ideas, again trying to trick the public into giving him money, right? So one person remembered that this guy 10 years ago was caught and they posted a blog on it or a tweet or something, right? Immediately, everybody knew about the guy. So he didn't raise any money. He was shut down by the crowd, right? The power of the crowd and the knowledge of the crowd and that information and the internet is self-policing. So we don't need a frickin' regulator to tell us what to do. We'll do here, it ourselves, here. right? Here, here, yeah. So that's the power of the okay. crowd. So I've been a big fan of crowdfunding because I think everybody should be able to invest in a startup. Now I'm going to turn it over to you and then I'll tell you what are the problems with that. Sounds good. Okay. I like dialogue like this. Now, getting back to crowdfunding, what happens is the Jobs Act in the United States enabled something called solicitation of angels and accredited investors. That was probably the most important change that happened in the Jobs Act, as it's turning out. Because what it means is ventures like you can go to AngelList or some other list and actually find angel investors who have a fit and give them a call. Or that was not allowed before. You had to know the angel. Now you can. So they've really relaxed the legislation there. Same in the UK and Australia and Malaysia and Mexico, but they haven't done this yet in Canada, although it's on the books. And that will change a lot of things quite dramatically. And I call that crowdfunding because what that means is you can pick passionate in angels who have an interest in your business anywhere in your country, not just in a local city. And you know what it's like trying to find an angel that would like you. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. Well, how many people here use LinkedIn? Fantastic. Do you know LinkedIn is now one of the biggest source of investor information in the world? It is now. And it is actually, they estimate, sourcing more deals than any other platform out there today. Bigger than Angel List or Gust. Anybody heard, heard of Gust? Now, these platforms are interesting. You can put your business deal up on it. You can use it to refer other people to it. Have you, anybody here gone to Angel List? So you notice you can see the angel, click on it, find out what deals that, that they've done. If you get one of them behind you, he brings four or five others. It's an interesting way to get angels going. It kind of defies the get to know your investor rules a bit, but they're doing a lot of conferencing now and it's, it's a new world out there. And in the crowdfunding, I'll talk about the different types, debt, rewards, equity, because some of these things are in place now. One of you came up with an idea today, and I want you to stand up where I said the best solution for you was to crowdfund this because you would demonstrate a market. Now, could you please stand up and explain why? Explain what that means. Well, you show traction that people are interested in the, uh, in the product and service. So it's simply a market fit with the people who want it. Uh, and that would and, uh, show, show an angel that, that there's a need for it and a want for it. So is it possible that a lot of these crowdfunding rewards base are being followed up by angel rounds? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because okay. like every punch. angel wants to see customers. And if they go to Kickstarter and buy this stuff, it's a good bet. Thank you. So here's the data points um, from 
crowdfunding beat, who I, who I know well. They've done a lot of good research sound. Um, it's still fundamentally true that startups are being funded largely by the startup player. And that includes their own personal accounts and their own credit credit. Now, these numbers are skewed a bit because a lot of these startups in here are people like Bill Gates and people who have made a lot of money and turn around and start new things to get this cluster. So, you know, if you subtract those out, it's actually a lot smaller. If, if you look at your average star setup, it, it, it's not owned by Bill Gates. I don't even know if you want to be. <clears throat> now, the next biggest one, and this does hold true, is the friends and family round. I talked to a lot, a lot of companies, said, oh, my idea is so good. And I said, well, uh, have your friends and families, associates put some money in it? Oh, no. I don't want to talk to them. What happens if they lose their money? What? They're, okay, but what about it? I mean, so it's okay for an angel to lose their money? <laughs> hey, it's okay for us to lose their money. Such, what are we fools? Suckers. Suckers. So, so that's interesting. Now, here's an interesting trend. These numbers have actually adjusted themselves. The venture capital in the uh, North American continent is actually not as high as that. And angel investors is moving up at twice the rate. So what's happening? Is in fact, I, oh, think it's a, I think it's a lot higher because well, it's, speak, un it's speak. unreported. I get to sit for a while. Well, it just, yeah. It's not reported. It's not tracked. Um, and True. this is only what we know. True. But there's a lot more happening that we don't know about. So the numbers are much higher. When you look in the future years, that angel investor category is going to go way up. The venture company in seven years, I told, oh, let me tell you a story. I met with a senior vice president of Blockbuster. Sat down and I said, seven years ago, I said, you're going to have a problem. People are going to be buying their movies on the internet. She looked at me and she picked up a DVD and said, no way, they're always going to want this. Well, five years, uh, two or three years, years ago, I didn't call her back because she was out of business. So I'm going to make a startling announcement. And you may not like it. <laughs> the venture capitalists are dead. They don't even know it. Because crowdfunding and crowdfunding is going to disintermediate them. A lot of angels, they get more social savvy aren't going to want to pay a 2, 3, 4% fee. They're going to want, want to go themselves through angel groups like Kirstu. A lot of that venture capital comes from angels today. And another problem that the VCs are having, other than maybe just a few in Silicon Valley, is most of them aren't making money for their investors. Yes. So they're not raising money themselves. They can't raise money from the institutions, the pension funds, the high net worth individuals. Their returns, generally speaking, are terrible. They're often negative or single-digit returns. They're just not performing. And the ones that will have a future are going to start to move into crowd fund funding. They are now, I'm speaking with, with them, or start to develop more angel thrust. So I predict that venture, uh, sorry, vulture, vulture, capitalists <laughs> will be out of business in six or seven years. Okay? And that the power of funding is you, <laughs> not them. It's getting a little bit loud, eh? We're doing fine. Okay, and then banks. This is another organization as far as source of capital is drawing up rapidly. They used to be at 28 billion. They've come down, they're estimated to go to, they're going to be there as a place for transactions. And they'll fund your house. And they'll give you debt. But not risk debt. And then, of course, crowdfunding is already...